Hi, welcome. If you're new to my channel, I'm Stephanie. Thank you for tuning in. Today I'm sharing part one of my dining room built-in project. In this video, I'll be installing some base cabinets. I'm making my own butcher block countertop and then building and installing some big bookshelves. I want to quick thank Lamps Plus for partnering with me on this video. They sent me two beautiful light fixtures to feature in our dining room and my home office. You may have seen a sneak peek of them in my intro. I'll talk more about the Lamps Plus light fixtures later in the video, but you'll be able to find the link to both of those light fixtures in the description below. So I'm going to walk you guys through my design plan for this project and then we'll jump right on in. I designed our built-ins in the SketchUp program. As you can see, we've got a lot of storage for glassware, tableware, miscellaneous kitchen items. We'll have space for a little coffee bar on the right side, and in the middle we'll have our mini fridge. Our kitchen is very small, so we need all the extra storage space we can get. Before installing the base cabinets, I replaced our old two-prong outlets with new three-prong outlets. Make sure your breaker is turned off and test the outlet with a lamp or a voltage tester to make sure that there's no power going to it. I'm unscrewing the wires from the old outlet and then screwing the wires back into the new outlet. My outlet on the left wall needs to be extended to fit inside my cabinet, so I'm using this single gang box extender, but I'm waiting to install it until my cabinet is in place. I bought these Hampton Bay base cabinets from Home Depot for this project. First, I measured the base of the cabinet and then transferred that measurement to my wall. Then I used a utility blade and my multi-tool to remove the base trim where my cabinets will go. I took a measurement for my outlet and transferred that to my base cabinet, then used my multi-tool to notch out for the outlet. I'll link the tools that I used in the description below. I had to kind of work around my door trim and I installed a little wood spacer in this corner. Now that the cabinet is in place, I'm using a level and some wood shims to make sure the cabinet is level and plumb. Once the cabinet is nice and level, I marked where the stud is. I drilled a hole and then secured my cabinet into the stud in the wall with a two and a half inch screw. Once the cabinet was secure, I installed the single gang box extender so that my outlet was extended into my cabinet. I followed the same steps for my next cabinet, making sure it was level and plumb. I used a clamp to clamp the face frame of the cabinets together. Thank you. 
Once the cabinet was secured to the back wall, I secured the cabinets together through the face frames. I drilled a pilot hole first, then used a countersink drill bit so that I could countersink my screw and it sits flush with the surface of the face frame. I screwed the cabinets together at the bottom and at the top. Here's what my outlet looks like inside my cabinet. The other outlet doesn't interfere with my base cabinet, so I just pop the cover back on. I follow the same steps for the two cabinets on the right side. I'll link these cabinets in the description below. Now that the base cabinets are installed, it's time to work on the countertop. I bought three 2x10s for the countertop, cut them down to size on my miter saw. I left them an inch longer than they needed to be, and I'll trim off the extra length in a later step. Next, my husband helped me put the boards through the planer. This is my first time using the planer, and I think it's going to be a game changer for my DIY projects. I'll be sure to link the planer in the description below. After the boards were planed, we cut them to width on the table saw. Each board is about 8 and 5 16th of an inch. So my countertop depth is 25 inches while my cabinet depth is 24 inches. I drilled a bunch of pocket screws using my Craig jig, glued each of the boards together, and then secured the boards with large clamps and two and a half inch pocket screws. This was a little tough because a few of my boards were a little warped, so be sure to pick out really straight boards when you're shopping for lumber.
I let the countertop set for 24 hours and then brought it outside for sanding. I used 80 grit on my belt sander and then worked my way to 220 grit on my hand sander until it was nice and smooth. I used some wood filler to fill any cracks and knots in the wood and then did one final sanding with 220 grit sandpaper once the filler was dry. Make sure to hit the corners and the edges with your sander to round them off a bit. I took one more final measurement of the countertop and cut the excess off. I made the countertop about an eighth to a quarter inch shorter than my opening so that I didn't have any issues sliding it into place. I had to notch out a bit of the trim. Now we're ready to install the countertop. Once the countertop was set in place, I used some screws to secure it to my base cabinets underneath. Now it's time to replace our sad, broken chandelier. I mentioned earlier that I got these light fixtures from Lamps Plus. They have so many great options to choose from no matter what your style is. I picked out two fixtures that would complement each other well. This is the Maxim Uptown 26 inch wide brass and chrome chandelier. It fits the style of our house perfectly. I made sure to turn the breaker off to the dining room first. I took out our old chandelier, rewired our new chandelier, and then added on all the final touches. Then I replaced the ceiling fan in my office. I never use a ceiling fan and I need more lighting in here anyway. So I went with the Allegri Floridia 23 inch wide crystal chandelier. I wanted to glam up my office a bit and this light fixture is a perfect touch. The electrical box isn't centered in the room, so I took a measurement at the center and installed this ceiling hook so that the new chandelier will hang right at the center of the room over my desk. Check out the Lamps Plus links in the description below.
The next step is to install the shelving. I'm using 1x12 boards for my vertical supports and for all of my horizontal shelving. Then for the back panel of my shelving, I use 2 feet by 4 feet by half inch project panels. I would have bought a full 4x8 sheet of plywood for the back so that I didn't have to splice it at all, but I couldn't fit a full 4x8 sheet of plywood in my car. My shelves will each be 59 and a half inches tall, 12 inches deep, and 4 feet wide. I cut all the lumber down to size, drilled pocket holes, and then sanded everything down so that they're ready to be assembled. I secured the back half inch panels together first with wood glue and one inch pocket screws. Then I secured the frame pieces together with one and a quarter inch pocket screws. Once my shelves were secured, I then secured everything down into the back panel piece. My shelves are 12 inches deep and spaced about 14 inches apart. I took my multi-tool and notched out the crown molding where my shelving will go and then we set the shelving in place. I followed the same steps for the next set of shelves, except with this one, you'll notice I had to notch out a small rectangle for the light switch.
Okay, there you have it. That was part one of the dining room built-ins. Next week, I'll be working on installing the arches, installing trim, and prepping for paint. I can't wait to see how it all comes together. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you come back next week for part two.